Welcome back to the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. The purpose of these episodes is to help entrepreneurs become more successful, avoid tax and other business headaches. Remember to tune in frequently as we will be sharing tips, secrets, and expert recommendations on how you can manage your finances, improve wealth, and grow your business. Please like, share, and subscribe. Here's your host, Liz Soria. Hello, folks, again to another exciting episode. This is Liz Soria, your host of the Tax Advisor Business Success Podcast. I have another really amazing guest who's joining us by the name of Mitch Jaworski. Jaworski, sorry. Um, and he is with the Scary Cat Guide. Um, and we're going to be talking about real estate, which is one of my favorite topics and yours too. And the topic is going to be about why being a real estate landlord is worth it. Is it really worth it? Uh, well, we're going to find that out in the truth, the pros and the cons uh, with Mitch. So Mitch, welcome to our show. And how are you today? Hi, Liz. How's it going? Uh, happy to be here. And uh, it's, it's going. It's, uh, you know, keeping busy because that's what happens with real estate. It's, uh, it's the passive let, yet active uh, business. So, uh, but I enjoy it. You enjoy it, and that's what matters the most, right? Um, we talk a lot. We, we hear a lot about passion and passion, um, but I think it's a little more than just passion, right? Uh, we need to take action. <laughs> so, yes, yes, I talk about that a lot, actually, because you know, there's um, there's always a need to get educated, uh, regardless of what the topic is or whatever it is you're investing in. But education without action is essentially useless um, because you don't produce anything, you don't create anything, you don't earn anything. So um, that's something that you don't want to fall into. It's a trap a lot of people fall into, the paralysis by analysis, learn, 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 learn. But you hit a saturation point at some, uh, you know, at, at a given time. And, you know, I always mention it's kind of similar to working out at the gym. You know, you have that gain and then you kind of plateau at a certain point. Wow. So, exactly. And that's like, you know, you need to take a different action at, at that time. And in regards to investing, I feel like it's the same thing with learning. You have the learning phase, but then you hit that plateau and you're not going to grow anymore unless you start taking action and actually doing deals. Um, and there's so many different ways to do that and there's so many different ways to invest in real estate. But me personally, I like doing buy and hold rentals and uh, being a landlord, which you know you can do in multiple ways. Some people think about how they don't want to deal with uh, tenants and phone calls and things like that, but you don't have to be an active landlord. You can be a passive landlord and that's what property management's for. So um, it's a decision to make, you know. Right, and I'm sorry, Mitch, uh, share a little bit, how, how did you get involved? Because I mean, like I said, I have a variation of, of audience all the way from newbies uh, to more experienced you know, investors. And, and I think it's interesting because at this point you've done multiple properties. Um, yes. So you've been there, you've done it. Um, and like, like I always say, there's so much that you can plan and, 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 and have, you know, a future um, training, whether it's coaching, whether whatever each you know, person feels more comfortable with. Um, but I think, like I said, it's jumping in and taking that action and having one and two and three properties of experience because the more we do it, but hopefully the better you're going to get if you're doing it right. <laughs> Let's yes. start with that. Yes. <laughs> because yeah. you can have multiple properties and make so many awful mistakes that it gets to a point. Oh, it. yeah. And then and that's where the, you know, comes in that education is important. And when I bought my first property, I didn't have any education uh, specifically in real estate investing. I was just an investor. Um, I had been a day trader. I had invested in the market for years and other, other type assets. So I knew that, all right, I need the rental income I'm bringing in to at least meet my taxes, mortgage, insurance. But there's so much more than that. I mean, if you want to be a successful investor, there's so many more things you have to factor in. And if you don't have any education, you don't realize that. So um, I actually got lucky with that property because it still was a good investment even after I factored in these things I didn't know at the time. But the lessons I had on that first deal was because I had no idea how – the process worked, how a closing worked, how, uh, you know, the, uh, the ins and outs of a uh, sales contract. So I relied on real estate agents. I relied on mortgage brokers. I relied on title agents. And unfortunately, two out of the three really didn't do their job very well. They dropped the ball. The deal almost fell apart. I actually had a very, very um, bad experience. And even though the deal get, did get closed in the end, mm -hmm. instead of 
being excited that I was buying my first property, I literally walked out of the closing room more frustrated and upset than I think I'd been in a very long time. And that's, I don't think how you're supposed to feel when you buy your first uh, property. So I don't think so, right? <laughs> that doesn't sound right. But so, that's the point of you were because you relied, thinking that you were relying on other professionals. Exactly. Which which you should. You should like you know like you need your accountant. You need your 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 you know your your title company. But you also need to understand um, the basics of what needs to get done, so you can kind of make sure that they're doing their job um, because if you don't understand the process, then how can you gauge whether they're doing a good job or not? And this is how Scaredy Cat Guide was born. I basically, um, I'd been blogging for years and I'd written some, for some websites and I was like, you know what? I'm sure I want to share this, these experiences so people don't have to go through what I went through. And granted, you know, everyone's going to have different experiences. Everyone has different uh, goals, desires, and risk and a risk appetite, but you can still learn from other people's mistakes. Um, because some of those experiences will come across your table, come across your plate. So that's how the Scaredy Cat Guide website started. And then uh, as I got more experience, I ended up writing a book and putting a lot of those experiences in the book and then kind of essentially going through what has become my process to find, buy, and rent out properties, you know, from start to finish. And it's so not rocket science. Step, and I'm sorry to interrupt, step by step, yeah. you know, that book. And what's the, what's the title of the book? And now is it, is it available? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Scared to Cat Guide to Investing in Rental Properties. Uh, you can find it on Amazon, but uh, also uh, if you go to the Scared to Cat Guide website, there's a bookstore where you can buy it, uh, the ebook, or you can find the Amazon link. Uh, and I also do have a uh, video course I created, but uh, I've only offered that to uh, specific meetups I've done, but I'm going to probably get it on the website and get it out there to the world uh, instead of uh, holding it hostage to just my uh, my in-person uh, folks. Please, but, uh, yes. you know what, I, I think that sometimes, and I, and I always say that we are here to share knowledge. And, and yes. one thing is that they say that, you know, training um, and, you know, educating yourself is so important, anything that you do in life. Um, and, you know, by all means, I, I'm a firm believer that you don't have to have a degree to be successful. Oh, not at all. Even though I have one. So do I. I, I, I believe that there's certain things that does not require that paper. However, it doesn't mean that you should be lacking, uh, you know, the training, Agreed. understanding of the, the concept or the investment yes. that you get into, whether it's uh, cryptocurrency, whether it's real estate, whether it might be other type of investments like uh, franchises, you invest in other businesses. So there's so many different kind of investments. But one of the things I personally, you know, really love about real estate is because we know it's one of the pretty much almost one of the safest, uh, you know, tangible, something Agreed. touch, uh, you know, investment, because let's make a, a brief comparable. And I know you're into crypto uh, currency. And by the way, I do have an episode about that with another expert who does that. Oh, too. nice. I'm gonna have to check so it out. Please check it out because who knows, maybe both of you can even share some of your knowledge and help each other, you know? And that's what I love about doing these kind of episodes, because for me, it's not only about uh, helping the audience out there to be a little bit more knowledgeable. Um, yep. the reality is that also for among everyone that have interview, kind of create like a mastermind and all of you, you know, helping support each other because that's amazing, right? But networking is important. Isn't that so true? So one of the things is I love the title of your company, uh, Scary Cat Guy. I thought it was so funny. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you and I, we obviously met not too long ago in one of the real estate networking events. And uh, one of the interesting things is I'm active also in the industry. And I do believe that for you to speak and walk in someone else's shoes who's doing that, you need to be in their shoes too. And I think that's really important. You're active, I'm active. And, and for listeners and you know people who are watching us through the YouTube channel, um, it's important for them to understand that if you're gonna go and look up to someone, uh, it's someone that's active in the industry that knows what they yes. did 20 years ago. 20 years ago, a lot of things yes. have Five years ago, a lot of things have changed. Don't we know that? So, oh yeah. Tell me about not only it was a bad experience because you rely on your first investment and all these other professionals. Um, I would say probably in the hope that things were gonna yes. be better and turn out the opposite. So you're saying to anyone who's probably planning to buy first property or maybe had a bad experience, will you say that it's forming a good support team, people that you really trust? that they know they're going to deliver the service that they promise you is so crucial. 
It is. And I mean, that's easier said than done. Uh, maybe you can get lucky and the first person you use is going to be your, your rock, but generally that's not the case. So I think uh, that's what I mentioned earlier about understanding the process enough so you can actually tell if someone is good at their job and is doing their job. So, you know, I have a title company that I love and a contractor that I love, and it took some time to find these people. And I had, like I said, the quote unquote bad experiences, but those also, I don't want to call them bad because they were learning experiences and were the catalyst to me getting the knowledge I needed to understand, you know, a sales contract, to understand just everything from, you know, a, a good inspection, appraisal, all that stuff. So now I know enough that I can tell if the job's being done, but not quite so much where I can do it myself, nor do I want to do it myself because you need to use people. You need to have a team. Otherwise, you're going to bottleneck your own progress because we can't be, you know, everything and, and everything. You have to have a team to do like I have an awesome accountant. I have, you know, I, like I said, a great title company. I can't. And I learned a lesson with that. Many years ago, I was doing my taxes myself. And then when I started getting involved in real estate and day trading, I still tried to do it. I messed it all up, you know. I had to get a, I had a, you know, a couple years worth of taxes had to get readjusted. What a um, nightmare! Not worth it, is it? Yes, exactly, exactly. Like that's that's what some people don't realize. I mean, you uh, time is money, and you know your time's worth something, and you know you should use professionals, but just understand enough so you can tell if the person you're using is doing a good job or not. Because there are people out there that do great jobs. I like that point. I think that is important um, because, again, it, it, it's about just because someone presumes that they know what they're talking about, they should be able to have the experience too, and that's crucial, you know, when it comes to that. Yes. Um, the interesting thing now: what was your experience with your second property? Hopefully, it was a lot better. Um, and now, because you were able to kind of re, um, reform a new team that you knew you could trust a little more. Uh, do you feel that it was a, a, a much better experience from you? And what other things that you took in place um, that the listeners can learn from you of what to avoid? Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, what to avoid, I guess, could be different with every deal, you know, depending on the state, depending on, you know, uh, what type of deal it is and, you know, whether you're buying something retail or foreclosed or whatever it is. So there's a lot of variables. And that's actually one of the things that I needed to accept uh, kind of move forward with real estate is that I can't know everything. There is risk in any investment. Like there's variables that I have to accept. You can't, you can't have everything in concrete um, before you pull the trigger. Uh, that's just the way it is. And that's kind of like the quote unquote leap of faith you need to take. So um, things I learned, I mean, on the second deal, well, I had a better agent, so that helped. Uh, he negotiated the hell out of the deal and actually got me a, uh, surprisingly good price so I was happy about that so that was like hey look at that you know someone you know in my corner getting it done okay um, and then also I realized things like the power of uh, you know being able to offer cash uh, I used an equity equity line on the first property yeah. to offer cash on the second one and I realized I, I noticed the uh, power that gives you in terms of maybe getting a better price or you know getting your offer accepted compared to others so you know Little things like that that don't seem all that important. Cash is the king, I'm telling yes, you. Yes, <laughs> cash is king. And it's funny to extrapolate on that. I actually have, uh, I think it's a chapter in my book, and I've re written posts about it called Cash Flow is King. And when it comes to rental properties, that's one of the reasons I love rental properties. That's one of the reasons I love being a landlord, so to speak, is the cash flow. And uh, actually, um, if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind mentioning a few other reasons why, you know, being a landlord slash owning rentals is awesome so uh cash well, flow is number right. one yeah that way the audience understand because a lot of times the things that we hear and, and you know we have to be your front to this good or bad like anything else right oh yeah um, oh yeah if you get a bad apple as, as a you know as a tenant um i mean i i, I was on one time also a landlord and uh believe it or not i had a phenomenal experience with my my, my tenants uh, there were a couple and guess what uh they rented for the three years until i sold the property it was nice. a condominium. Three years, they renew it year after year. That's I awesome. I never, never missed one payment from them. I actually was so wow. 
Yes. I, I might not have sold the place just to keep that tenant because you don't find those, uh, especially in South Florida, you don't find them very often. You do not. And it was incredible. And, you know, here's the, 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 the most bizarre thing of the story is that um, I had a listed on, you know, the regular MLS and I was just not yep. the right people. And I uh, and luckily that building allowed me to put a sign for rent. And, and I'm sharing this. And bingo. I get this lady out of the blue who had just recently got married. They were in their fifties. Okay. It was awesome. And she said to me, she goes, I'm really interested in your neighborhood. I, you know, I want to see anyhow, long story short, like I said, she ended up uh, renewing three years. Unfortunately they split up and that's why, you know, she couldn't uh, afford completely, you know, to, to yeah, pay. yeah. But this was a person who was calling me, reminding me, yeah, this is true. Reminding me, Hey, uh, this, are you coming to pick up the truck? <laughs> All right, <laughs> note, note to the audience, that is best case scenario, so don't think that's how it's going to be every time. I've been blessed to have a, a tenant like that actually as well. Um, I mean, she didn't find me that easily. I, I had to, you know, find her, so to speak, through advertising. But, yeah, it's not always that easy. You're going to have great tenants. You're going to have bad tenants. Uh, if you are in the game long enough, you're going to have to do an eviction. But these are things that are part of the business, and that's why uh, I think when I hear people talk about it, like, oh, you know, I had a family member that owned the property, and they had a bad experience. A lot of these bad experiences are things that are just part of the business, and you need to factor that in, them in. So, for instance, like the vacancy thing, right. the fact that they stayed for three years put more money into your pocket because when you analyze the property and your you know, any potential cash flow, you should be factoring in vacancy and if it doesn't happen then great that money goes into your pocket you just you know a lot of times that almost doubles your cash on cash return in that given year so i think these are the little things that people don't understand and that's again why education is important and you know i also kind of want to let everyone know that um if you go to my website like i have a blog i talk about a lot there's a ton of free education there's a property calculator that anyone can use like i'm not just here like to picture book and things like there's plenty of free education out there especially on my website and i hope people use it because i want them to be empowered make better decisions and i highly suggest always using a property calculator when you're analyzing potential rental investments so there's one on the scaredy cat guide website it's free to, for anyone to use and they can use it as much as they like so hopefully people can find uh, some benefit from that um and the reason you want to use that calculator is to figure out like i said my kind of number one thing will a property cash flow. So with that said, I actually want to mention a few other things in terms of why essentially being a landlord and owning rental properties is great. And another one of them is um, the principal pay down that you get. So usually most people use a loan to buy a property. Um, even if I buy a property in cash, I usually refi out. Like I'll buy it in cash as a bargaining tactic and then I'll refi out. And at that point, you know, now I have a tenant paying rent, and they're the ones paying down my mortgage. They're creating equity in that home. They're building wealth for me. Yes. Like how often do you have an investment where someone else is building wealth for you? So, I mean, between that and cash flow, I mean, it's kind of almost a no-brainer to begin with. But then you also get, as you know, there's the tax benefits, which compared to any other investment probably has the most tax benefits there are. So the I agree with you hundred percent. That's why I really think that it, 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 people are starting to realize it's really, as long as you have a good structure and again, forming um, a desirable and supportive team of professionals that they're going to do the right service and deliver the right service, um, then there shouldn't be really no concerns about not investing. As long as you know, you have that, that I call it a master group, you know, yeah. People yeah. that you can trust and you can go to, like you, you have a title company that you know that no matter what, they're going to make sure that there's no liens against the property. Yeah. You're not going to go through this kind of headaches. Uh, but then you have, a, you know, a, a good maybe accountant, like you said, who's making sure that things are being done properly, not only yes. by numbers, because that's going to bore you to what? Well, hopefully not to have an audit. Because if you have an audit, people don't realize this, the minimum audit, I'm not a CPA by the way, I'm an accountant, but I'm not a CPA and you know, I do not want to become one. And I have respect, mm -hmm. for, I have respect for all my fellows who are CPA and I, you know, admire them that they've been through that exam and, you know, all that ordeal. But honestly, right now, um, a lot of returns are getting uh, audited because of a CPA signature. Um, so, you know, there's concerns with that because a lot of times internal revenue services things that, oh, because we know so much about the tax law, 
we might do certain things that to yeah. you know yeah. an extra deduction or credit to a yeah. I never done that. I'm very firm about what I do because the way I look at it and I tell my clients is I'm going to give you all your deductions. I'm going to give you all your credit. Everything that you deserve, you're going to get it with me. Yep. I want you to be sound and why? Because if you get hit with an audit, it's minimum. The minimum to hire a CPA or a tax attorney is $5,000 a month. Jeez. Just to hire to represent you. I've seen cases for like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Ouch. You know, so if we can avoid you getting into the audit, why not yep. do that in the first yep. place? That's what I do. So when people come with me with major headaches already, oh, I've got an audit. Sorry, I can't help you. You know, unfortunately, now you have to pay the bill. So let's try to avoid it. But yes, let's talk about depreciation, which is phenomenal. Here you're buying a property. Oh, yeah. It's so interesting because it's appreciating. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you hope it's appreciating. That's actually the final point I always mention to people. I was like, appreciation is kind of like the icing on the cake because there's no guarantee. The first three, if you buy right and do it right, you can almost guarantee those. But appreciation, obviously, is up to the market forces. That's not something you can control as much. But either way, like you said, you get to take depreciation and possibly have your property appreciation appreciating. And it's like, again, what are the assets? Can you do that in? I don't know if there is one. I mean, and that's it actually, it, it's funny, but the truth is that Uncle Sam loves people who invest in real estate. Oh, yeah. The biggest benefits and the biggest perks is, is in the real estate. Industry. Oh, yeah. Yes. Even what all the new recent changes that they did now just a couple months ago, uh, which a lot of people are going to get surprised this year, in yeah. 2019 as we're recording this. And now remember, these are changes that are going to happen for the next you know, 10, 15 years. So it's not only a one-year kind of term or two years. This is for a long time. Oh, yeah. And, and I have to respect that Trump did something right in the sense where I'm not going to enter to the red or the blue color here, but um, politics is a very iffy uh, <laughs> topic. <Yes. laughs> but I will say to you that I do one thing I do agree with Trump uh, is the fact that how he protected the real estate investor because, well, yes. what is he? Exactly. So I figured, you know, at everything he was doing, I'm like, well, he's a real estate investor. So I figured this will work out well for us. It has, it has, and I'm glad, I really am, because I think that everybody, really, most people, um, even people who have, you know, full-time jobs, they need to look at something on the side, because oh, being yeah. a W-2 is not a good statue right now. You do not want to be a W-2. If you can avoid it somehow, by all means do it, and I say that, but you're right. So we got depreciation, you can deduct all your expenses, so if yeah. you, I like your tactic, because if you can buy with cash, Obviously, you have that power to negotiate a better price, a better purchase price, and then you refinance it, and now you get to deduct the interest that you pay in also. Yes. That's yes. Awesome. I make sure I always make sure I hand those uh, those uh, forms to my accountant with uh, the amount of interest I paid for the year on a given loan, and thank you for the deduction. Thank you very much. You know, so it's it's good because a lot of times between the depreciation, the interest, and maybe any repairs you get through the year, you end up writing off a majority of the rental income you brought in. So now you have an investment where you're earning money and you're paying taxes on very little of the income. And again, what other investment can you do that in? And, you know, this is coming from someone that was a tried and true gung-ho stock guy for, you know, a good decade. And I wish I would have fell in love with real estate many years sooner, but it is what it is. Um, I'm glad I found it when I did. Um, and I think diversification is important. So there's some people that'll be all in on real estate or all in on stocks or all in on commodities. I think you should have some of all three. I, but, agree. I agree. And I'm one of them. Um, yeah. I agree with you. I, I, and listen, I, I know that a lot of people are opposed to stocks. Are they risky? Uh, yeah, they're risky, of course. You have very little control over those companies yep. uh, because being a shareholder, you just have a really tiny, tiny, tiny percentage uh, of that equity of that company. But the reality is that if that's passive income. Yes. So you make them work hard and hopefully you're going to get you know something back out of it. And you know what the truth is? Why not? Diversify. I always say that diversify as much as you can. Uh, whether you want to put maybe forty percent into real estate 
and maybe you want to put another 20% into stocks or mix you with cryptocurrency, uh, which I haven't done, by the way, that I haven't touched. Mm -hmm. uh, because, again, I mean, so high that whoever came in a couple oh, of yeah. years ago, Bingo, you guys got the, the big uh, the big power on that. Congratulations if you're one of them. Uh, anyhow, uh, the point <laughs> is, <laughs> so the point is, but for the ones who are coming in now, it's, it's you know, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's very high. But again, I do believe in diversify. One of the things I wanted to ask you, and, and as I have to kind of pick your brain here, you know, sure. uh, Mitch, how, how do you feel that what will be a standard return investment that you feel that is normal for you? Um, in, 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 I guess, I, again, it depends. I understand the location and, and everything. Okay. Well, it also depends on, you know, someone's goals and risk appetite. And I talk about this a lot because I'm rather conservative uh, with real estate compared to a lot of uh, investors that um, I'm friends with and that uh, I've done business with. And for me, my gauge was easy since I was a stock market guy for so long. I was like, all right, well, what's the historical average for the stock market? 8%. All right, so if I can find a real estate investment that's giving me 8% on just my money, just my cash on cash return, if that's 8%, then I know I'm meeting what I could get if I held stocks for whatever, 30 years, and I, and I sold at the right time because, but um, so I use that as my benchmark, and then I'll find anything that gives me a cash on cash return at 8%, and then I know I'm actually doing better than 8% though because I'll have possible appreciation so, and then on top of that though, even if it doesn't appreciate, I know that I have someone else paying down my mortgage and that is creating equity, thus creating value, thus increasing my return. Yes. So that's why I use that as a benchmark. So I basically guarantee myself to beat the stock market with real estate just by doing that. I know all the people that are much more aggressive, they won't get out of bed for anything that's not giving them at least a 12% return on their money. And then there's some other people that really aren't as concerned. They basically are buying it either as a tax shelter or you know whatever it is, uh, an appreciation play if they're speculating more. So they don't care if they're getting 1%, 2%, 3%, because it's not about the cash on cash return. They're doing it. And that's something I, I talk about a lot when people invest in real estate. Know why you're getting in. Mm -hmm. I, like, if, like wealthy people generally buy real estate for the tax reasons. And I want to have that problem. I'm working on getting to having that problem. That's where I want to be. Um, but, you know, a lot of other people are trying to either maybe build wealth, uh, wealth over the long term or build up enough cash flow where they can leave that W-2 job. And speaking of the W-2 you mentioned earlier is I personally, yeah, I don't want to do the W-2. I don't want to rely on someone else telling me if I have a paycheck or not uh, and worrying about if I, you know, lose my job or don't. But when you do have a W-2, I think leveraging that so you can get loans and mortgages more easily because I did that for my first few properties. I was working still. Uh, luckily, my job offered me a lot of flexibility, so I was able to kind of do both full time. But when that W-2 job was basically done and I moved on and I was just doing real estate uh, full time and kind of, you know, uh, education, it was like, all right, great. Thanks for missing my fat W-2 now. And now they don't want to lend me the money they used to want to lend me. So that is definitely a tip I would give everyone. Leverage that W-2 while you have it um, and try and get going on real estate before you, you know, quit your job. I see it in every different, I've seen it with stock trading. I've seen it with cryptocurrency. And I literally preach to people. I've be, I remember I begged people in 2017 with cryptocurrency not to quit their jobs. And sure enough, a lot of them did. And then 2018 happened and now they went looking for a job again, you know, sometime during 2018. It's just, it's, you gotta be uh, prudent. You have to have a game plan. I named my, my book Scaredy Cat Guide because obviously I'm very risk adverse and I always work towards finding the closest I can to having risk parity. It's impossible to do, but you can come close. And that's one of the reasons I do preach diversification and even trying to find uh, assets that aren't high, highly correlated because the more they're uncorrelated, the more diversification and risk parity you truly have. And that's what people don't realize. Um, if you buy 20 different stocks, you're only gonna get so, so much diversified because you're still in the stock market. So, and that holds true even with real estate. So that's why I don't like to, put all my eggs in one basket. Um, I might have a basket I 
lean towards the most and focus on most, but it's not going to be, you know, everything I have. And that's a great point. I'm glad that you're bringing it up with sincerity um, because, again, it's all about diversifying. And, and I always tell this to people, too. Um, even let's say that some people just want to invest in real estate. They're just obsessed with it. <laughs> and, and that's fine. If that's, that's their style or their, you know, their, their choice. Um, and that's fine. But why not diversify inside real estate, too? You yeah. know, instead of just buying... For, for example, some just do condos and maybe some would do a single family home and maybe you do a duplex. Why yeah. not have a little variation on that? I know, I know we, in, in, in most real estate investors, they hate the HOA. Um, oh, yeah. but, but the truth is, if it's a small building, like maybe less than, you know, 20 units, 15 units, and it's a good HOA, you know, they have a good structure of board. There's really not too much risk as long as you know this reserves in the in, in the building. Everybody's paying their maintenance. It's a nice little property that you can own. Uh, the possibly, especially depending if it's in a great location, that versus you will not be able to afford to buy a house because exactly. it's really expensive. But you can afford to buy a condo and have maybe you know even as an Airbnb. That I think that's one of the topics that is becoming a hot trend. In a it's, lot kind of, of, yeah, it's kind of the new trend in real estate, the new hot way to make money. It was, you know, I think uh, flipping was the hot thing for a while. And now uh, people are trying to, everyone's trying to Airbnb. And, and that's the thing. You see trends in, in the market and it depends on where we are in the mar market cycle. And I think that's why I love just straight rental properties so much because it really doesn't matter what point we are in a mar market cycle. As long as you buy where your property is going to cash flow you're good to go. So I don't, I'm not worried about buying at the high end of a market or low end of a market because the bottom line is if I plan on holding that property and the cash flow, you know, comes in mm -hmm. from the rents, I, it really doesn't matter to me what the property is doing because I'm going to hold it through an entire mar market cycle, if not longer. So um, that's uh, also good because it keeps me, I guess, from chasing the hot trend. But so uh, yeah, the HOAs, I mean, especially, you know, most of what I own is in South Florida. South Florida has a lot of HOA communities, and wow. I've uh, I've written, I've blogged about it. It's even a chapter in the book, the pros and cons of HOAs. Right. And and I've had and I have a war story about that. And uh, you know, it was recent. I sold a property last last summer, and it got it was a cash buyer, no less. And the deal got delayed for months because of the HOA. And I was just like, you guys are killing me! Right? Like money is flying in my pocket every month because you guys are basically dysfunctional. And, and being really unreasonable. So it, it's, it's important, yeah, to, you know, find a community that does have a good HOA board and that does have, you know, enough reserves and all those things and understanding what their policies and processes are because a lot of them are very, very, very strict and have a process that makes it very difficult to get a, a tenant in and out or to even just buy and sell it. So, you know, I've learned these things by dealing with HOAs and now there's certain things I see that I'll stay away from a community because I'm like, all right, I know that's going to cost me 30 days time. And then that's going to be a month that my property sits vacant because of uh, a specific process they use. So um, I've become particular about the HOA communities, but that doesn't stop me from buying in HOA communities. I've just learned what to watch out for, what I prefer and what's more efficient because the bottom line is, it's an age old saying, but time is money. Time is so, right. And if I'm on someone else's time and I'm, you know, I'm a slave to their schedule, I'm just sitting there watching dollars come out of my pocket. So again, these are little things you learn as you invest and as you deal with the different aspects. So for people that live in areas where there's a big HOA presence, you should understand, you know, at least the pros and cons of an HOA and then you're still going to have some unique learning experiences because in the end, HOA boards are made up of human beings and everyone's got their own opinions and yes. issues and, and, and biases and all that. So you can't, that's one thing you generally can't circumvent is, uh, you know, human nature, but you can at least put yourself in a position where the policies work best for you. Um, and those are obviously, you know, laid out in the bylaws of uh, any HOA community. So. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because that is extremely important. And, what, and the reason why I think I'm bringing this subject up is because 
Uh, again, we are in, in, in the east coast of South Florida, and we know that things will have improved very well, um, you know, in appreciation. Um, and, you know, I think it's been uh, last couple of months, some of us are a little bit concerned um, yes. whether or not, um, might not be the big bubble burst that we saw almost 10 years ago, um, but, you know, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of articles coming up and i'm sure you're aware of that oh yeah uh, there's uh, uh uh people starting to get uh you know concerned about the fact that there might be another little burst it's not going to be extreme as it was the last one because obviously the banks are the ones who really got trouble yeah we don't have the same ingredients that we had but it doesn't mean it's not going to happen look what just happened with the stock market in in yeah. it, Back in history, and you, you, you've been investing in stocks like I have too, so we come almost in a very similar background. Um, I, I know I lost a lot of money <laughs> uh, during the, the crash, and, yeah. um, and I had to learn that this time, I trusted back then in my retirement. Yeah, in my retirement is where I lost all my money. Now, uh, I use other venues on how to invest in the stock without being exactly in the retirement and mutual funds. I oh, yeah. I, I have nope. mutual funds. Um, fortunately, everyone that has a 401k or maybe a, um, what they call a, uh, you know, simple IRA, it's down yep. employer. They usually mutual funds, I tell people, run away from them. Yes. Not well managed. It's yes. a benefit. You have no control. They sell at a loss. You you, you, you don't take the a loss. The fees, too. The fees you get on those. I've, I've written, I, I wrote extensively. I do some blogging on some crypto sites, and I wrote extensively about mutual funds and how basically people were getting robbed of their retirement by Absolutely. mutual funds. Absolutely. And you were better, yeah, you're better off just going, honestly, in an ETF just Thank just you. for the sheer cost because over the cost of 20 years that extra one and a half two percent in fees I forget what the exact number was but it was mind-boggling like I put all the math out there and then I when I learned this stuff myself I immediately like reviewed all my family members stuff like my mom my stepdad like I was just like I gotta see what you guys are paying what's going on here and make some adjustments and so and whatever that's family and friends because obviously I'm not a uh, certified financial advisor in a, in a former life I was but uh, those days are long gone, so, uh, you know. You, you, you know what's interesting? Here's the, here's the beauty of things of life, and I always say it this way, because sometimes we move from one career to another, and, you know, we definitely, life is a process. Oh, yeah. And I tell people, you don't have to be stuck what you're doing now. There's always opportunities. It's about you planning and, again, taking action, right? Uh, because there's so much that we can write things on paper and plan and create a blueprint yeah, and yada yeah. yada. But if you don't go out there and you start moving and start making things shake around you, it's not going to happen, okay? Um, so the reality is that even if you come from a, a, another type of career, it's never too late to stir something. But again, not at all about having good support it's about having people like yourself mitch me or people in other you know networking events that you can actually meet face to face if that's what makes you feel comfortable right um and also like this i mean you can meet wonderful people who are serious about their business they're not gonna try to you know hopefully uh screw you over um, yeah, but yeah. I mean, the truth is you want to build this relationship because i think when we build relationship what happens we trust Yep. People that we know and trust is who we do business with. This is true. That's what it comes down to. So I say that to people, maybe the day or tomorrow, I decide that I want to make an investment. I could call you up and say, hey, Mitch, what's going on? Is there anything that you have on your router that maybe I might be interested in participating as an investor? And that's how you connect and you start trusting. And it yourself. happens all the time. It really does. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've paired people because like right now, currently, I'm not really looking for properties so much in Florida. I've been investing out of state. I still, you know, I have my properties in Florida that I hold. So anyone I know that's got, you know, properties that wholesaling, like I forward them directly to people I know that are buying here in Florida. And it's just, you know, common courtesy you know i don't mind doing it i like connecting people hopefully something good can happen from it you know and you know you create win-wins i like creating win-win situations and it's good faith it's goodwill and uh you know those people will look out for you going forward and that's the type of relationships you want to build um as opposed to you know being short-sighted where there's people that do that they just look at what can, what can they get right now out of somebody and then that's the only time they ever end up doing business with them 
Sure. Like that's not the way I live my life or the way I, I want to. And you're going to run into those people. I mean, I literally just ran into one of them recently and, you know, it took me a minute to realize and I'm like, all right, cool. Once I'm done with this deal with this person, like I'm probably not going to do any more deals with them because, you know, all they want to do is take, take, take. And that's not the type of people I want to be in business with. I try, like I said, you, you want to find people that want to uplift on a whole, like themselves, you, you know, they'll find win-win situations where everyone can kind of grow and progress together. So that's the people I generally work to have in my network. And, you know, it's like a garden, you know, you gotta, you gotta pull the weeds to, you know, let the flowers grow. So I agree with that. Plant the seeds. I mean, that's yes. a true fact. And you know, it's anything. Um, well, I, um, I, anyhow, I love plants, by the way. But uh, besides the point, uh, you know, and I do believe you, you're, you're really, um, you know, you, you, you're planted and then uh, you just nourish it. You take care of it and it grows and it grows yes. strong and healthy. Yes. And, and, and I agree with you. When you see, I think that after a certain age, we also realize who's coming for the, the cut, you know, and who's just yes. holding to uh, me, me, me. And it's a, a very selfish kind of uh you know, attitude. And unfortunately, some people are just going to be like that all their life. And others, well, we lucky enough to learn that we need to give to receive. Um, yes. And I think when we're in that position, uh, we can grow so much because we know that not only we're helping ourselves, we're helping others in the circle. And that's the beauty of when, when it comes to building relationships and getting oh, yeah. to know each other and trust each other. And uh, with that said, I know we have a kind of extended this a little bit longer, but it's typical when I do these kind of interviews, people are like you. It's just so easy to talk about stuff. So, I mean, I'd like to actually, you know, it's probably a good way to wrap it up. I'd like to uh, mention a quote that I love and you had mentioned about experience and, uh, you know, kind of you have to you have to go through experiences to you know get that kind of uh radar so to speak to you know figure out when you're working with someone good or not so it goes back to experience is the best teacher I, that's one of my favorite quotes and get education but education without experience it, you know you don't have the full package so you got to take action because in the end you can learn as much as you want from someone like me or someone like you but experience is the best teacher so Yep. Exactly. You got to walk, walk, like I said, walk the path. So I think that's a great way to kind of like close things out. Absolutely. So go for it for my listeners. Um, I know some of you are experienced. Others are, you know, looking into get into, you know, the real estate industry by all means. Uh, again, reach out to people that have interviewed like Mitch and self, you know, that they have the expertise. They've been there. They've done it. Um, and I really think they can help you in the process. And again, Self-education, it really is. It's not like we're asking you to go back to the university and spend $50,000. Um, yeah. It's such a small investment that you can do and just picking up, I call it the golden nuggets from every person. That's that's my that's my like uh, my gauge. Any book I read, any course I take, as long as I walk away with one gem, that it was worth my time and money. I agree with you. And the same thing, we all here in the process. I'm still in the process of learning. God knows well it's true. Oh. Life, you learn, you learn for life. You'll never know it all. So, but when we join together, we brainstorm. And this is yes. that because what you know, I might know something different. The other exactly. person might know something different. And we join that, I call it intelligence. Yes. And then by doing that, then we benefit all of us. And that's where my, part of my, uh, you know, uh, podcast and everything that I started two years ago was to really help the audience to understand that we cannot always expect things for free, please, folks. No. Nope. We can get and we can learn, again, a few little things here and there, but this is a time that we need to make an investment. In, 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 in a, you know, return of investment is very important. And again, as long as you select the right people that you feel comfortable with, yes. that you can connect with, that you can trust, you want to follow their steps, and that way they can help you in the process because – I do know one thing that I learned uh, throughout my years of existence is that uh, can we cut corners? Yeah, there's ways of cutting corners. But again, you need to make sure you have the support in your back, that you yes. have that team that you can just pick you up. You want that, found, yeah, that foundation. The foundation that you can email to someone and say, I'm, I'm not understanding this. Well, am I doing this right? Uh, and that is the support. we just never going to learn it all. That's the reality. Nope. If we don't even have a lifespan is not long enough to learn. Exactly. And there's only so much time in a day. 
So please, let's extend out to, you know, like I said, experts like Mitch to help you on the process. And again, Mitch, uh, your website, uh, any other contact information that you want to share with the audience? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously they can go to scaredycatguide.com. Uh, um, and uh, like I said, we have, I got my blog up there with plenty of information. Uh, people can use the property calculator. Um, you can uh, find a Facebook page, Scaredy Cat Guide. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out there on the web and I'm interacting with people. So if anyone's got, you know, any questions, you know, hit me up, uh, you know, Facebook or, you know, reach out through the website and uh, be happy to continue sharing my knowledge. I, uh, I enjoy doing it. I just have uh, that urge to teach um, on top of, you know, doing my own stuff. It keep, keeps you busy though. <laughs> It does, it does. And Mitch, once again, thank you so much for, for you know, coming to our show and sharing so much vital information. Um, because I know their value of money. It's, so I want, I want people to understand that even when we give free information, we're sharing things that sometimes we can charge for. Oh, absolutely. We, we just do it as a value because we believe in you. We believe that hopefully someday you're going to come back and reciprocate and say, okay, you know what? I learned so much from this person, that person. Uh, it cost me nothing except time to listen and learn, let me yeah. reach out to that person now and say, hey, can you help me with the rest of the stuff that I want to do, you know? So once again, folks, uh, thank you for listening. I know you have a lot of choices out there and my podcast is growing with very wonderful, uh, you know, listeners like yourself, like, share and comment. And if you have any questions for Mitch, by all means, put it in the comment, especially on YouTube, you can do that. And if not, you can always, you know, send me an email and, and I'd be happy to forward to Mitch. So once again, folks, thank you so much for watching or listening to, uh, you know, the Tax Advisor and Business Success Podcast. And Mitch, thank you once again for being with us. And uh, uh, we'll be in touch, that's for sure. Thanks so much. Thank you.